Hi, my name is Joe Miller of morethancake.org, and in this video, I wanted to share with you some strategies for using wordless in Logos Bible software. So as you open Logos, you'll see the menu underneath Documents. The last option is Wordless, and this feature allows you to create customized lists of Greek or Hebrew words. So when I select this option, you'll see that a blank word list comes up, and I just name it whatever I want to study. In this case, I want to study the Greek words in the book of Titus. Now to actually get words for my list, I click Add, and there's several options. I could use stuff from other documents I've created, but in this case, I'm just going to type in Titus, select the option from the drop-down menu, and now Logos creates for me a complete list of every Greek word used in the book of Titus. And I've got my list sorted by frequency of use, and one great feature here is that Logos allows you to not just see the words and look at how it's used, but also you can use the pronunciation feature so you can begin to get familiar with how the word sounds. The other great thing is that Logos allows you to create flashcards. So when I switch from the grid view to the cards view, I see that I have the option to use Avery labels or all different kinds, and it sorts every word into a list that I can print out. And notice there's the front of the card that has the Greek, and on the back of the card, would print the English words. So it's a pretty great feature, especially if you're trying to learn new vocabulary. But now here's where the strategy comes in. How do you use these lists in conjunction with, say, a different class that you're taking? Well, if the class is just studying the book of Titus, well then I've got my list, I'm all set. But what if I'm taking a class in the pastoral epistles, which are Titus, 1st Timothy and 2nd Timothy all combined. Well here's where the power of logos really comes in handy. So to make this happen I click the merge option and when I do that I see all of my existing word lists. So all I do is I simply click on 1st Timothy and now I go to my options and in this case I want to do a union of these two lists. And that will make all the words available on both lists combined on one brand new list. Now there you see that brand new list that says Union of Titus and 1st Timothy. And now I need to add to that list 2nd Timothy. Again I select that. Now I go to Union. And now I have a list, a union of Titus, 1st and 2nd Timothy, all in one giant word list. And I can print that out to study the pastoral epistle. But that sort of brings up the next issue. Logos gives all these options of union, intersection, difference, and symmetric difference. What do all those options mean? Well, they give a short little phrase that explains it, but if you're not familiar with math or you don't have a strong math background, you're probably going to be a little confused by all these symbols. So let me just take a few minutes and explain what each of these options does when you're creating a word list. First, we'll look at union. In this case, let's just take Titus and 1 Timothy. Now to keep this simple and illustrate how each of these options work for word lists, I've selected three different words. The word doulos is in both lists of Titus and 1 Timothy. And then I've selected one word which I'm going to say is unique to each book. So in Titus, I have this word phanero. And in 1 Timothy, I have this word kerygma. Now watch what happens when I select union. So you see the resulting list is the three unique words from both books of the Bible. Now let's look at an intersection of Titus and 1 Timothy. So intersection means that when I merge two different lists, only the word that is common to both will be used. So in this case, there's only one common word in Titus and Timothy that I've selected, which is doulos. So if you're doing a study on the pastoral epistles, and maybe you're familiar with a lot of Greek words, but you really want to focus on the most common words, so you do well in an exam, then intersection might be the option for you. Now let's look at difference. So when I merge two lists using difference, Logos is only going to give me the word that is unique to the primary list. So in other words, I started with Titus, and I'm merging it with the list from 1 Timothy. So in this case, I end up with only one word which was unique in Titus, Fenero. 
But let's flip that around. What if I began with 1 Timothy as my primary list and I was merging it with a list from Titus? In that case, I would end up with the word kerygma because that word was unique to the primary list that I started with when I merged the two. So what this would be good for is, say for example, I've already taken a class in 1 Timothy, okay? And now I'm going to take a class in Titus. So I only really want to focus on words that are new to my vocabulary. I don't want to create a whole list of words I've already studied or I've already mastered in another class. So in this case, since I've already taken 1 Timothy, Titus would be my primary list. And then I would use the difference from my list in 1 Timothy. Now my Greek study would be only focused on those words that are unique to the new course I'm going to take. But now look at the last option, symmetric difference. So what this is going to allow me to do is create a word list of any word that is unique to both Titus and 1 Timothy. So now the common words all drop out. In our case, doulos is the common word on both lists. And now I end up with a list of words that are unique to both Titus and Timothy. So what this is helpful for is imagine you've already been taking courses in Greek and you've studied several books. Well, you've got a lot of the basic common words down at this point. Now you're taking a course and you really need to focus your study only on the words that are unusual or uncommon to some of the other books you've studied. So using symmetric difference allows you to get a lot of unique or uncommon words that you might otherwise not have come across in some of your other studies. All right, so that's it for my strategies for using word lists in Logos Bible Software. Hope you got something good out of it. Check out my other videos on my YouTube channel or find me at www.morethancake.org.